to have this team prophesy over us as we came out across the mountains to plant Heart of the City Church in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, would you give a huge Heart of the City Church welcome to Pastor Jerusha? from. Everything just makes sense now. I was like, oh wow, he's loud. And then I'm like, oh wait, I'm loud too. But I just thought it was so amazing that he was talking about Joshua and Caleb over you guys because all weekend I just keep thinking, you are such Joshua's and Caleb's and you're leading a house full of Joshua and Caleb's. And I, there's so many things that I love about this house, but one of my favorite things about this house is there is no negativity here. There is no complaining here. Um, I actually just wouldn't, that song was from here, right? The last song. Yeah. And I was just standing there and like actually what was echoing in my head was just God's great approval of me. And I was thinking, wow, this is a house that lets you know that God approves of you. And, and I mean, like, I've been walking with Jesus a long time, but there's been a grace on my experience here that decades of church people not approving of me just rolled off of me. The approval of God is here. It's on you. It's on your leaders. And so I bless you. I bless you to send that message of God approves of you out into the world. I just, I see this being a house, just like when Jesus gets baptized, right? And he comes out, this is my beloved son. I just believe that that is gonna be the anthem cry of this house. You're his beloved sons and daughters who he's so well pleased. So I just, I honor you guys. I honor this house. I honor your leaders and pastors. And Pastor Mark Strong, you might be, um, just one of the most likable people I've, I've, I've ever, I've ever met. I actually was sitting here being like, how have I never gone to his church and just sat under your ministry? I know I'm so upset right now. I got to come visit your church, but seriously, just the, um, just the amazing kindness and compassion. And you're just, I just feel like you're our friend, but then you're so deep. <laughs> And there's just deep reservoirs that I'm like, wait, you're singing one minute and that's fun. And then the next minute I'm like, wow. So it's just, it's been an honor to learn from you. And I just, I'm, I'm honestly just wowed by you and seriously sing every time you preach, every single time. <laughs> and Pastor Patrick is one of my husband's and I's, he's our, he's our buddy, he's our mentor. And literally you are the standard when it comes to prophetic. So honestly, it's really scary to prophesy with you because I literally think you could go down the line and have a word for every person. So thank you. It was, it was awesome. This morning, I want to talk to you about the sound of rain. And I knew I was in the right spirit when I came out of the hotel this morning. And Girl did her hair. Well, girl didn't do her hair. My wonderful, amazing, loyal, heart daughter, Faith did my hair, and I was like, I can't wreck my Faith girl's hair. So I used the amazing basket that your team provided in my room as my umbrella, and I have my basket on my head, and the, like the hotel people were literally laughing at me as I'm running to my car. But even this morning, you heard the sound of rain. You heard the sound of rain. And I think in this season and in this time, God is moving in the earth. And I believe that we are going to see signs and wonders even in the heavens. And I was like, God, wow, how cool that you let me get soaked and almost ruin my hair just to remind me that you got a word for heart of the city this morning. Do you hear the sound of rain? Will you turn with me in your Bibles if you want to? Um, I'm not using the New King James Version because I am not at their level yet. I will arrive there someday. I'm not there yet. Uh, you can pray for me there. But turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 18, verse 41. And it says this, Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound 
of a rainstorm. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the summit of Carmel. Interesting, right? Ahab's going to party because the famine's about to be over. But Elijah, he's going up to pray. He bent down on the ground and he put his face between his knees. And Pastor Mark just did a beautiful job of talking about that travail asking, right? Then he said to his servant, go up and look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked and he said, there's nothing. Seven times, this is a long time, Elijah said, go back. On the seventh time, he reported, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand coming up from the sea. Then Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, get your chariot ready and go down so the rain doesn't stop you. In a little while, the sky grew dark with clouds and wind, and there was a downpour. Everybody say, downpour. So Ahab got in his chariot, and he went to Jezreel. The power of the Lord was on Elijah, and he tucked his mantle under his belt, and he ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Can I tell you, there is the sound of rain in the sky. There's the sound of rain in the atmosphere, in the spirit. But can I tell you, we children of God, heart of the city, we have to anticipate the rain before the rain comes. It's really easy to anticipate the rain when I'm getting rained on. Like this morning, it wasn't like, oh, whoa, I wonder if it's going to rain. No, I was getting rained on. You know what it's really hard to anticipate the rain? When your prophetic word from five years ago or your prophetic word from ten years ago still hasn't happened. And so instead of anticipating the rain of God, instead of anticipating God's fulfillment coming to that thing, you stick it on a shelf and you say, nah, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's time for the people of God to anticipate the rain. Uh, my husband is, he's a man's man. He grew up in the country, and if you're country folk, you use the expressions hunting and fishing. And I am not a country girl. So I remember my boys going over to their grandparents' house, and they come home, and they're like, Mom, we went fishing. And I'm like, excuse me? You wash your mouth out. It is fishing. And my husband turned to me, and he's like, it's fishing. And I'm like, who we are? Like, who are we? We live in Portland, Oregon. It is fishing, right? So I want you to know I've come a long way. Now that I live in the country, I now say fishing and hunting. But you can tell I'm not good at it. You can tell it doesn't come natural. But there's, an there's another expression. Imagine two old guys just rocking away on the front porch, looking at the weather. Because when you get really old, you talk about the weather. I don't know why. <laughs> or just some people like to talk about the weather. I don't. Who cares? It's either sun shining or it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> so they're sitting there, and they're rocking away. And one of them holds up their finger. Hey, feels like rain. Right? I think there's some people in the world who need to be sitting there in their churches, sitting there in their communities, sitting there in their schools, sitting there in places of government, sitting there in hospitals, sitting there in places of influence, sitting there in their sports arena. I think there's some people of God who need to be sitting there. They need to stick their finger in the air and they need to say something like that. Hmm. It's feeling like some rain's about to come down. It's feeling like some rain's about to come down in this time, in this season. But you know what I'm worried about? I'm worried that instead of anticipating the rain, we're indifferent to the rain. We don't even care. We line up for prophetic word after prophetic word, and we're not actually anticipating that word coming into fulfillment. Can I tell you, if you're in here and you have a prophetic word,
word that still remains unfulfilled, you probably don't need another prophetic word. You know what you need? You need to stick that little weather finger, that little prophetic weather finger up in the air, and you need to say, hmm, feels like rain. Do you feel that? Feels like rain up in this place. The second thing that happens in this story that's just amazing is Elijah actually shows us how to ask for rain. First thing, it's promised. Do you know when we ask for things, we're asking for things that have already been promised. I don't need to make up what I'm asking God for. He's already promised it to me. In the beginning of chapter 18, God comes to Elijah and he says, hey, you know that three-year famine that you prophesied? It's about to rain. Feels like rain. And so Elijah goes up there and he's like, you know what I think Elijah's saying? I know I actually feel Elijah here this weekend. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to go right there. Be in that moment. Oh, God. I just prophesied a word. I'm really scared that word is not going to happen. But you said it feels like rain. You promised rain. And so, God, I'm saying right now, let it rain. But it doesn't just stop there. It's not just promised, it's persistent. Seven times he sends his servant to go check the sky. Seven times. Can I tell you, sometimes I get prayed for once at the altar and I'm upset. God doesn't answer it. We, we just recently did these cards at our church. We were believing we were just in an open door season. And so we prayerfully wrote on these cards things that we were asking God to open doors for us. And I wrote on this card and I went forward and I got prayer and I did it. And then I put it in my Bible and I didn't think about it for a month. And I felt like God said, hey, you need to get persistent in prayer. You need to stop just going for a one, one and done, right? And so I pulled it out of my Bible, and I started praying. Can I tell you, within the week, within the week, three of the things on that card happened. What? In Luke chapter 18, there's a story of an annoying woman. They say persistent, I think they get it wrong. She's an annoying woman. There's this evil judge, he's not a good guy, and she keeps going to him and she says, give me justice, and he's like, nah, nah, nah. And she keeps going to him and she says, give me justice, and he's like, nah, nah, nah. And finally, he answers her and gives her her justice. Why? Because she got persistent. I have a seven-year-old son. Anybody in here have a seven-year-old son? You know what I'm about to say. He's literally like, him and his brother are the light of my life. Oh my goodness. I give that kid anything. That's part of the problem. This is why we got here. (laughs) But he will literally, he will literally do this. From the other room, I tuck him in. We say prayers. We hug each other. We kiss each other. Like, I'm his favorite person. I know this is going to go away very soon. But he'll be laying down, and all of a sudden I hear, Mom! Mom! Two times I can ignore. Mom! Three times, uh, mom! Finally, I go back in there. Yeah, Jay, what is it? Hey, mom, can you write down in your text messages to remind me in the morning to do my devotions? Sure, Jay, you're gonna do them. So, but yeah, okay. Mom! Mom, right? We go through this series, and I know, I know all of you amazing parents in here are like, why are you reinforcing bad behavior? I'd like to tell you it's because I'm a good, good mother, but that's not it. It's because he is what? Annoying. Church, it is time for the people of God to get annoying. I'm, I'm not talking about not tipping. 
I'm not talking about being rude in our culture. I'm talking about going to God and saying, God, I'm here to remind you that you promised me this. And I'm going to keep coming every day and reminding you that you promised me this because feels like rain. But I love this, right? So here's Elijah. He's up there praying. He sends his servant, servant guy. And I think it goes something like this. Go up there and see. Goes up. <laughs> Nothing, right? They're going back and forth seven times. This guy's getting a workout. <laughs> Finally, he goes up. Can you imagine? We've all seen skies with no clouds, right? Doesn't happen very often in Oregon. You gotta leave Oregon to see that. This is my message. I've come all the way from Oregon. I brought the rain with me, y'all. Okay, here we go. And he goes up there and he sees a cloud the size of a fist. It's not a huge cloud. It's not a sky full of clouds. It's just one little cloud. Can I tell you, we're not supposed to despise small beginnings. And then, I think he runs. I think sometimes the Bible leaves out stuff. I think he runs back to Elijah and is like, hey, boss! <laughs> right? This is, like, this is like a prophet in training. You know he is fangirling all over this moment. <laughs> oh, I get to tell Elijah there's a cloud in the sky, right? And he's like, hey, boss! There's a cloud. There's still no rain. I just want everybody to know there's still no rain. And Elijah goes to Ahab and says, you better get home. You better get home. Because it feels like rain. And then Elijah, he runs. He runs out in front of Ahab. Guys, 17 miles. I dare any of us who are not in marathon running shape to outrun a chariot 17 miles, please. And all the commentaries, all the commentaries say he did this because, you know, he was honoring Ahab, slaying of the prophets and all that. But I don't know if I agree with that. You know what I think? Elijah was doing. I think he was rushing home to the children of God to announce the amazing good news that it feels like rain. See, we got to anticipate. We got to ask. And then we got to announce it feels like like rain. I don't know if you can sense it. Sure, here in this room, it feels like rain. But can I tell you, all over the world, God is moving. God is moving all over churches, all over people of God. There's something happening. And those who have hearts, come on. They're beginning to lift their prophetic finger and say, it feels like rain. I want to close with this. Zechariah, verse 10. Sorry, chapter 10, verse 1 says this. Ask the Lord for rain in the season of spring rain. The Lord makes the rain clouds, and he will give them showers of rain and crops in the field for everyone. <laughs> it feels like rain. God's promise to us is this. In the season of rain, if you ask for rain, what's it going to do? In the season of rain, if you ask for rain,
rain, it's going to rain. I don't think some of you are catching what I'm saying right now. We are in a season of rain. The world is in a season of rain. And God is looking for some men and he's looking for some women and he's looking for some young people and he's looking for some kids and he's looking for some people who've got their finger to the air and they've been waiting and they've been listening and they, they've been on their knees and they've been asking and they're saying, God, whoo! It feels like rain. And like Job says, in chapter 37, just as God commands snow and it snows. Y'all know this. <laughs> hmm. God commands a downpour and it downpours. Feels like rain. Feels like rain in this place. Feels like rain in this house. Feels like rain in some homes. Feels like rain in your youth. Feels like rain. Come on. Oh, in your kids. It feels like rain. Oh. Feels like rain. Feels like rain in your finances. Feels like rain in your career. Feels like rain. Feels like rain in your emotions. Feels like rain in joy. Feels like rain in peace. Feels like rain in abundance. It feels like rain in here. I don't know about you. I like Acts 2. I think Acts 2 is pretty cool. I would have liked to have been there in Acts 2, but I actually would rather be here now. Because <laughs> it feels like rain. It feels like rain. It feels like revival is about to break out. Feels like the stories I've read about, I'm not gonna say it right because I'm not Irish, but there was a revival in 1949 started in the Hebrides Islands by two old ladies, an 84-year-old woman and an 82-year-old woman who were in church on a Sunday morning and they looked around and they said, there are no young people in church, we're all old. We need a revival. So they started praying in the middle of the night twice a week. Two old ladies, one was blind, couldn't even see. And then they went to the pastors and the elders and they said, hey, feels like rain. You need to come pray with us. And they started praying. And they had a vision of this guy named Campbell coming to their islands, preaching the gospel. These little old ladies invited this really big deal evangelist to come to the islands. And young people would be at dances dancing. <laughs> and it feels like rain and the spirit would fall and they would leave that place and they would head to the church and there wasn't even really people preaching. They'd just begin to throw themselves at the altar and cry out, Jesus, come. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come. And God began to move all over the islands. rain in this place. I hear the sound of rain in the earth. And today, if you have ears to hear, if you have a heart to hear, Jesus wants to come to you right now and he wants to say, do you sense it? It feels like rain. And the word of the Lord to this church is ask. The word of the Lord to this church is if he promised it, he will do it. The word of the Lord to this church is persist. 
And I even think you've had prophetic words spoken out over this church that you've actually said, ah, maybe we didn't interpret them right. Maybe, maybe this is what they meant when they said this. This isn't what they meant when they said this. This is good, but the best is yet to come. This is good, but there is more to come. And I believe he would come. You actually, you know what's weird? They're, like, they're going to prophesy the best words over you guys ever, but you don't need any more prophetic words. Like this church, you're overflowing with the promises of God. You're overflowing with the provision of God. You know what you need? You need to stick your finger in the air and you need to begin to lift your voice, not just in this place, but in your homes. You need to lift your finger and say, God, it feels like rain. And you said, in the season of rain, we could ask for rain and you would give it. That's what you said. I'm a simple girl. I just take Jesus at his word. I'm asking for rain. A couple months ago, I just had this sense of God just fall on me. I've gotten so many prophetic words that I was going to be part of a revival. And revival is such a Christian term. I'm like, ah, oh, it's just rhetoric. And then I just started studying stories about revival. And I started saying, hmm, feels like rain. Let's go, Jesus. I don't understand what that means. I don't even understand if me being part of revival means I lead a Bible study and I get a whole bunch of young women ready to go out into the world and preach the gospel. I don't even care what it means to be part of revival, but Jesus, I see your rain beginning to fall and it's just getting started. Right now it's just a sprinkling. Right now it's just a little bit, but God, I believe we are headed into a season of downpour and your invitation to us is ask. I'd like you to stand to your feet right now. It's time for you to do some work. Are you ready? It's time for you to begin to open your mouths and ask. Some of you in this place need to remind God. It's not that he forgets. He just likes to be reminded. Don't you like to be reminded? I like to be reminded. Begin to lift your voice and remind him of what he has promised you. Remind him of what he's promised your family. I believe it's supposed to get loud in here. Just as loud as if we were singing. It's supposed to get loud in this place. God, your promises to my family, God, are provision. God, you have provision. You have provision for our future. You have provision, God, for our house, for our kids.
Amen. What a powerful word. When I look at that word, I, there's this thing that comes. Before you ever see it, you hear it. It's a sound. And I believe that this church is moving into a manifestation dimension. But we're here at the beginning of the year at the sound conference because God wants you to hear the sound before you ever see it. Because as you go into February, March, April, come on somebody, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, for the rest of this year, you're going to see what God has been saying in this weekend. And somebody say it, before I see it, I have to hear it. There's a sound. Now, there are the effects of rain. Elijah was a rainmaker. I love what James says. One day he's a man just like us. And one day he prays and the heavens shut up. Three, years, th three and a half years later he prays and it rains. And one of the things I'm hearing in my spirit as she was preaching, and what a powerful word. What a powerful word. I don't know what's going on here. Something's loose, otherwise I'll... Testing. Microphone. Test. Are we good? Are we good? Test. I'll just use this. One of the things I was hearing in the spirit, when you look at that passage of scripture, was this. Was the message that Elijah gave to the king before it ever manifested. And that was this. Go eat and drink. I want you to hear this. Basically, he was saying this, and I want to I want to prophetically move on something here, just for a moment. Basically, what he was saying was this. You're moving out of ration mode. See, God wants to speak to some people here today. You've lived in famine mode, you've lived in drought mode, and you've lived in ration mode. Let me bring it down to you in 2020 language. Hey, King Ahab, Go have a ribeye. Thank you, Jesus. Last night I had some grilled salmon with some risotto, and then we shared a bite of bread pudding. Can I talk to somebody up in here? Somebody's hungry. But basically what he was saying is no more ration mode. When the rain shows up, Something changes. Something comes from the heavens and lands in the earth and gives the earth what it needs, but not just what the earth needs, but the seed that is in the earth. It gives it what it needs so that it can bring forth fruit. But before you ever move into the manifestation mode, I need you to begin to act like... Well, somebody's alive up in here. I need you to begin to eat like... I need you to begin to live like you're no longer in ration mode because with the abundance of rain comes an ab abundance of harvest to heart of the city church. And so the Spirit of the Lord is here today with this word and he's saying you're moving out of ration mode. The drought is over. Come on, somebody. Somebody. The famine is over. And so if you've experienced where you've been in ration mode, I want you to just lift up two hands right where you're at because God's about to change things in your life. Pastor Jerusha prophesied and preached this word, said, the rain, it's rain, 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 rain. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And so we speak the word of the Lord right now over each one that has their hands lifted up, Lord. And we thank you that 2020 is going to be a year of provision. It's going to be a year of concepts. It's going to be a year of ideas. It's going to be a year of manifestation. It's going to be a year of increase. And it's going to be a year of abundance, says the Lord. And so today, Lord, we thank you that your people are going to move into a time of celebration because it's raining. Hey, it's raining. I'm not a singer, but it's raining. 
Can somebody say it? It's, hey, help me out, Seth. It's rain. Put your hands in the air. Let it rain. Let it rain. Hey. Let it rain. And that word was so powerful. I was, I said, Lord, I'm, I got to do, I got to minister. But I was like, whew, this is working on me, Jesus. This is working on me. And I just, you know, I want to encourage you today. And I want to just challenge you along the lines that have already been laid this morning. Thank God for his word, for the scripture. And I want to just say this too, that sometimes we come and say, okay, Lord, you know, give you a prophetic word. Speak to me personally. But I've just kind of learned over the years that even just as the word is preached and is spoken, you, 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 you harvest that, you grab it in your heart, and it, and it brings forth and it produces what God wants to come forth. But in the book of Habakkuk or Habakkuk or however you want to pronounce it, Habakkuk. So I've had all different seminary professors, they all pronounce it different, you know, this kind of thing. But, uh, you know, Habakkuk was, he was perplexed. He was bent out of shape because he saw the oppressions. He saw what the Assyrians were doing to the Israelites and so forth. And so he had a problem. He's like, Lord, this wicked nation, what's going on here? And then the Lord told him, he says, look, I'm going to do something that's so incredible in your day that you're not going to really recognize what's going on. And so uh, God, God tells him, he says, you know, I'm raising up another nation. These Babylonians are going to come. And they're going to. Uh, inflict judgment and then at the end of the book he has a problem because he's saying hey man they're worse than the other guys were but there's that little scripture tucked in there that says the vision is for an appointed time though it tarry wait for it it will surely come it will not lie right he told me to do something he said write it on the tablets and make it plain now we'll say you know what do you mean by tablets well in our society, would be like, write the vision on the billboard, on a big billboard. So everybody that walks by, runs by, they can see what the vision is. Now, from the time that God spoke to him about this one nation coming and judging another nation, it's probably maybe like around a 13-year period. So what do you do when God speaks to your heart to encourage you about a situation and the answer is so slow in coming. Our natural tendency is to do this. Well, maybe the word was defunct. It really wasn't what I thought it was. And so maybe I need to try to seek and find another one to get something that's more up to date. You know, instead of 1.0, I really need like a 2.0. God when he speaks, he, 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 he's not like us. He, he Really, he's not like us. You know, we need to hear stuff over, and he knows this, over and over and over and over and over again. Case in point, John the Baptist, right? The Bible said there was never a prophet born, born from a woman that was greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist had the wonderful opportunity to introduce the Lamb of God, the Messiah, the incarnate Jesus Christ to the world. John's baptism, and John's ministry, the Father actually spoke from heaven. The Holy Spirit actually descended from heaven. Everybody else, thousands of people, they didn't recognize who Jesus was. John had that revelation. Behold, here comes the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. John was born for that. Fast forward a few years, he's in prison. You know, I, 
I guess I'd be a little nervous too. You know, that's why I was saying, hey, I'm going to take your head off in the morning. I'd be a little nervous. And John just does the human thing. Go ask him, is it really him or should I seek for another? Now, Jesus was good. He was who he said he was. But the human element, the human, tell your neighbor, the human element, come on, the human element starts to deteriorate or begins to say, is this really, is this really God? Is this really it? When Jesus was speaking, it just hit me so hard in my heart. That's why I just had to get down and kneel because it just smacked me right in the heart. There are those of you that are here today. Let's just be honest, myself included. You're looking for a new word. You're looking for a fresh word. You're looking for another word. With intensity, God speak, God call me. But the reality is, maybe it's five years ago, two years ago, a month ago, two weeks ago, he's already spoken to you. He's already talked to you. He's already spoken to me. So with the same intensity, we would want something new. That's the same intensity. We've got to go into our spiritual basement, go into the drawers or the boxes, reach down and pull the word out that has spider webs and cobwebs on it and, and maybe mold around the edges and shake it off and say, you know what? This word is still good. It's still good. We're going to pray in one second. Paul told Timothy, he said, you remember the prophecies that went forth over you? Timothy was a bishop, probably over church, 20,000 people. He says, do you remember the prophecies that went forth over your life? Now, why would Paul say, do you remember these? Because he probably forgot. He needed a, re he needed a reminder. And so Paul says to him, look, buddy, you've got to stir up the gift that's within you. Meaning what? There's something that was inside of him that was dormant because of what? The human element. Come on. And so I believe to this morning, God wants to, and, 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 uh, hey, I'm in this too. I might be talking, but I, I'm in this, man. I'm right here. My face is on the floor. My face is on the altar. I'm saying, God, help me. I, I'm in this, man. But I believe there is a supernatural quickening that's going to take place this morning. In your heart. In your life. That pertains to God's word. Now listen, this is the last thing I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. God takes Ezekiel, you know the story, to the valley of dry bones. Now, just listen at, the, listen at the descriptive nature of the scripture describing where he took him. He said, the Lord took me to a valley, and it was full of dry bones. Not just one or two, but it was full of dry bones. And the bones were very, very, very dry. Right? So, tons of bones extremely dry no moisture no vitality no life extremely dry bones God speaks to him and says son of man can these bones live that's the imperative question can these bones live he's a smart prophet he says oh because if you ask me heck no these bones can't the Lord these bones are dead but he says God you know so the Lord says, begin to prophesy to these bones. He prophesies the bones. They begin to come together. And then he says, prophesy to the Ruach. Prophesy to the wind. And the formation began to happen. This morning, the dry bones in your life, the word of God that's laid dormant within you, 
words you've heard from preaching, words you've heard from prayer, words you've heard from prophet, uh, prophecies over you, words you've heard from when you read the scriptures, promises that were not so dear to you, they put a smile on your face, but time has evaporated and the human element has eroded. We're going to pray. And I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear the word of the Lord being revived in your heart. I hear the promise of God coming alive in your heart. I hear the Spirit of God saying that word is still good because the word of God does not have an expiration date. Go get a carton of milk that has an expiration date. The word of God has no expiration date. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but what my... So if you can relate to that this morning and you say there's some stuff in me, that's some words in me that are just dormant that need to be resurrected. If you want to come and stand right here, please do. If you want to get in the aisle or if you can, just let's just you know, kind of make this an altar call. Then I'm going to hand it over to Patrick. He's going to take it from here. But we're going to pray. God, I need you. I want you to revive your word in me. I want to pull some stuff out of the, that's been buried down so deep. And there's going to be a miracle that's going to happen in your hearts this morning. A absolute miracle. We come against every spirit of unbelief. Every spirit of doubt. Second guessing. God, we resist it. We repent from it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And just lift your hearts to the Lord. And just say this, say, Lord, I thank you that the word you spoke to my heart has not lost effect. But the word is still good. And today, Lord, I thank you because that word has the potential to make it rain in my life to fulfill your purposes in Jesus name so God we say thank you today for restoring thank you today for renewing thank you today Lord God for uh, uh, bringing to surface Lord that which was uh, dormant God that which has been laid in Father God because of life we thank you Father for your spoken word in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah